I'm joined now by College of Medicine Chair, Dr. Michael Dixon. Michael, thanks for being with us. Hello. Uh, now, why is now the time to raise awareness of the importance of a healthy lifestyle? Well, I think uh, COVID has taught us that we need to be more resilient, we need to be more protected, um, and lifestyle is very much uh, involved both in producing a good immune system, but also, you know, things like weight, which we know has been a big issue. Um, so I think COVID and uh, approaching winter with all these bugs that people uh, tell us we're going to be having. <laughs> Now, we are all told uh, a lot that we need to be eating high quality, good quality food. Uh, how do we make sure that that good quality food is accessible to all and particularly to those who need it the most? Well, I think that's a big issue because uh, affordability, we know the 10% uh, poorest are those who have about half the amount of vegetables of anyone else. Um, and we know that uh, if they were to have the ideal eat well plate, as it were, they would be spending 75% of their income. So affordability is a big issue, and that's why that's something we need to look at with the uh, coming white paper. It's not just affordability, though. It's also about us being, having become sugar addicts, you know, in our diets. Uh, so therefore, it's about how we change that diet and how we improve our uh, intake of fruit and vegetables, particularly polyphenols, um, and also exercise more and become healthier generally. I mean, is there a problem that also that requires education and often that education isn't reaching the people who most need it? I think it's education, but I think actually most people know what they ought to do. It's a question of them being motivated uh, to be able to do that. Um, when we uh, go into social prescribing, which is uh, when a link worker helps someone to get to the place they want to be, we measure something called the patient activation index. It's about how much you're in power over your own destiny. And what we need to do is to make people feel empowered and motivated, um, because otherwise we're not going to change things. And frankly, you know, over the last few years, all these government programmes, we haven't reduced, uh, we haven't increased the number of people eating more vegetables and fruit. It's actually had no impact at all so far. That's really interesting. And let's talk about vitamins and minerals. We all know they're important, but how can we make sure we're getting enough of them, particularly as we come into the winter months? But, well, mainly I think it's a question of diet. Um, and uh, if you do eat fruit and fruit and vegetables, then you're likely to be having enough vitamin D, vitamin C and all the rest of it. Um, there is, though, however, a case, I think, for most of us taking a small vitamin D supplement uh, in the winter. Um, the reason being not only that we're less likely to get infections, um, but also uh, it's protective against other things, even things like cancer. Um, and unfortunately, there's not much sun in the winter months. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess there's that focus as well on prevention rather than cure. If we eat well, we might stave off some of these illnesses. Totally, totally. And, and, and uh, we know from, from, from COVID, you know, with the, the, the story about weight, uh, uh, that, that that's important. And, you know, the sadness to me is that we haven't yet done sufficient research to find out exactly what does help. But I think there's no doubt that, uh, again, a diet with plenty of fruit and veg does actually provide you with immunological protection. Your manifesto is called Hope for the Future. It covers the next 10 years. What's your hope for the future? My hope is that medicine uh, and all of us will go beyond pills and procedures. We'll start looking much more seriously at the way we live, our diet, the way we move, the way we love, the way we look after each other. Um, because I think the future is about self-care. It's about us being enabled to look after ourselves, being motivated to even feeling valued enough to bother about it. And it's also about us looking after each other within the communities, just like we've seen during COVID, with masses of volunteers coming out of the woodwork. And from that, we lead to sustainable agriculture, producing sustainable good food, uh, and all the way to climate change. It's about creating a better world, but the, the essential bit of that is connection. Connection with ourselves, connection with the community, and looking after each other a bit better. Dr. Michael Dixon, thank you so much. It's a pleasure.